Hi there, this is uh, Keith Kaus. I'm hoping you hear me. I'm going to go check live on your computer and just double check my sound is okay. This is Keith Kaus with uh, How to Build Your Own Home. And I have a subject matter <coughs> that uh, a lot of students uh, have been asking me, and it uh, has to do with land. Uh, it is the biggest issue. The two biggest costs that you are going to have when building your own home, uh, well, actually, the biggest cost would be the land. And they can also be your worst nightmare. <laughs> and I want to talk about that really, really, really briefly here. If you were to hire somebody to build a home for you, sorry about the glare there. Is that a little better? Yeah, there we go. If you were to hire somebody to build a home for you, you'd be paying a huge amount to this general contractor and then let's say the land's paid for it but you never looked at what the land was all about that is an uncertain cost that is a buried cost you don't know what is under earth the biggest issue as I see and the biggest cost that's unforeseen by a lot of builders and owner builders because they don't do a lot of due diligence is what's really in the land what really is two feet down three feet down 25 feet down if you don't know that you can be in some serious trouble two of the worst types of soil are collapsible soils and expandable soils which one would i rather build on which one would you rather build on think about that for a second would you rather build on a collapsible soil or an expandable soil I'd rather build on an expandable soil. Um, a lot of homes in Denver are built on piers because they've got expandable soil, which means when the water percolates into the ground, it expands up and it can lift the home and crack the home. But if you put that home on piers and you go down 15, 25 feet, whatever the engineering requires, that expandable soil can slide up and down basically those piers and you've got six inches to ten inches of clearance from the bottom of the footing to the actual soil so it never interferes with the home. I've seen that once it's done right uh, and built right you should have no problems. Collapsible soil that's often uh, uh, more affordable on some situations and the ones I've run into than a collapsible soil. What does collapsible soil require? It literally requires complete over excavation, taking all the dirt out, sometimes 15, 20 feet down. I'm dealing with a job right now where I have to over excavate 10 feet. And if I still find more collapsible soil down, I still have to go down another two feet, compact that, and then I have to recompact. And every eight inches on the job I'm dealing with right now, every eight inches I have to have a compaction test. So I have to pay for an excavator, I have to pay for a geotech to be there on site, recompact, test, recompact, test, recompact, test. With an expandable soil, uh, all I'm doing is drilling down for the most part. I'm over excavating about where the footings are going to be, just a foot, you know, two feet down or so. In some frost areas, it's a little further down. And I drill holes and I fill it up with concrete, with rebar and all that. And I build my peers and if, if you've got a company that knows what they're doing uh, they can do it really effectively and efficiently but with the excavation where it's collapsible soils it's a huge mess it's something you don't want to deal with and a lot of people a lot of even builders owner builders even developers do not do any due diligence on their land they just buy land because it's cheap I know some lots home sites uh, just west of me that we're going for fifteen thousand dollars and uh, the average home or lot price in the area is anywhere from eighty five to one hundred and forty and on up to four or five hundred thousand dollars that's because there's a nightmare underneath and uh, we've gotten really good in our area with regard to um, handling soil issues because we live in an alluvial plain filled with terraces we're on the north side of the north rim of the Grand Canyon just you know about a couple hundred miles about 150 miles north and so we get all the wash off off the 
Rocky Mountains. We're really a high plains desert area. So we deal with a lot of soils issues. And if you do not get a geotechnical report before you buy land, you, you are in the dark. And so before you buy land, I strongly recommend you negotiate as part of the deal to get a geotech out there. Now there's two ways they do a sample of, of, of land. They often uh, drill a hole and they'll go down 10, 20, 30 feet sometimes and they'll do that maybe two spots, maybe three spots and they'll pull up some core samples. Sometimes they'll do a backhoe. I prefer a backhoe. I can't get down as deep with a backhoe but I'll go down 8 to 12 feet with a backhoe with a big scoop and I can crawl down in and we can look at the strata. If you know that there has been a lot of movement on that property for quite some time, then you you can see what's happened. I bought one of the first builds I had. I bought the land thinking it was a great deal, and it was a great deal. But when I dug into the footing, I found two feet down piles and piles of grass clippings, piles and piles of branch and organic debris, which was going to be a nightmare. Eventually that would have rotted and my house would have collapsed into the rot and I would have had a huge uh, um, lack of support under the footing in that corner of the house. So I had to dig all that out and, and refill it with good fill, compact it, get a, a compaction test, a new compaction test. That cost me an additional you know, $3,000 and that was a lot back when I was building that home back in 2005. But I've seen excavation costs increase 10, 20, 30, 40, 150,000 dollars because we buy in the dark. We don't know what kind of soil it is. Now expandable soils and collapsible soils, those are your enemies. Those are the ones you really want to know if you've got. The next one is, <laughs> is it volcanic or is it granite or is it just a hard pan of rock underneath there? If you've got to put a septic system in there and you've got to dig through that to try to put a drain filled, that's going to be a nightmare. Uh, soils te soil tests and percolation tests. You typically get a perk test for a septic system and a soil geotech report for the, for the soils to determine uh, what the soil's like, which then tells the engineer how to build the building, how to engineer the building to accommodate for those soils. If you have to have a septic system, that's another one. That price can go bonkers. Uh, it can go through the roof or it can be pretty simple. There are shallow systems, there are deeper systems for septic and the shallow systems sometimes in some areas require testing and you have to pay for that testing. It's another utility bill and it, it would have been solved if you looked at the land first and said oh there's so much rock underneath it's just a hard rock of, of granite I'm not going to have any percolation so I've got to have a shallow septic system and uh, then I have to have some increased costs with that. So know your soils. And the best thing you can do before you purchase the land, and it's not already subdivided, I'm going to get to the subdivided part right in a second. If it's not subdivided, request to get a geotech report. We're talking anywhere from 800 to maybe two or $3,000. It's more in some areas. It's less in other areas. Shop around and ask for this seller to pay for that. Because you can't, the only way to do due diligence on land is to get a geotechnical engineer out there, dig in the ground and find out what the heck is in there. And the, the benefit is and ask them to pay half of it. And if you end up not buying the land, at least they now have a geotechnical report that they can actually offer to people. When somebody sells land and it says sells as is, well, you're going to get as is. You are, you are not going to know what's in that soil. Now, there are some areas where it's really fine and it's great. I built on the mountaintop and it's just all granite. And east part of the valley was great. We typically were really safe without any too much of an issue. But the other side of the valley, we had expandable soils. And nobody ever built over here without pulling a geotech report. You can ask around to see what other builders are doing, but typically if there's uncertainty and there's a lot of hesitancy about what's going on in your area with regard to a soil, get a geotechnical report. Just go online and type in geotech engineer 
and you'll find several of them hopefully in your area or within a range within 50 miles and uh, the good ones have their own drill and they have their own backhoe if you've got a friend that has a backhoe ask them to come to the job site and ask the engineer uh, will a, a 10 foot or 12 foot small pit be okay for a test pit do not dig it until the geotech guy, uh, engineer gets there. He's going to want to see how it sloughs off, how, how stiff it is. He's going to want to crawl down there and see how it unfolds, see how much moisture is in the ground uh, at the time of dig, because they know when the last rainstorm is. But if you dig that test pit two or four or five days in advance and it's done, he's not going to know what, what, the soil con what the moisture content is in the soil. Moisture is a big, big issue. Um, you know, when you recompact for uh, a foundation, getting proper moisture in the ground to compact it, that's especially true with uh, collapsible soils. When you recompact that soil, I did a six foot over X on a home, which means six foot over X means you go down six feet, take all the soil out, and then you, you put it back in. We lost nine inches. So from taking six feet out, and recompacting it, we lost nine inches. That's a collapsible soil. That's the worst you can have. Uh, because if it's not done right, you can have some collapsible soil in some part of the house and you've got, you've got slippage, you've got cracking going on in your foundation, uh, you've got a lot of problems. So, number one, ask for a geotech report. If they don't have one, ask if they'll split the cost or ask them to pay for it. Uh, um, you can even increase the price, uh, two or three thousand dollars, they pay for it. That way you're not out, out any money, but at least you know, you don't want to buy in the dark. If it's a subdivision and they're selling home sites inside the subdivision and they give you a geotech report, it is not a geotech report for that home site. It is a general geotech report for the entire area, so you really don't know what's on that particular home site. It could be Poltergeist, for all you know. And that's an actual true story. The movie Poltergeist, was the whole area, was built on a, on, it wasn't necessarily built on a graveyard, but it was built on a dump. And a lot of homes, you know, a lot of subdivisions in California have actually been built on dumps. And uh, you don't want to build on a dump. You've got all kinds of gases coming up. And it, it's a nightmare. Check the history of the, of the land to, to see. You'll see, you'll, you kind of know if it's been built on a dump. Ask around and find out from, from, from some people. But just keep in mind, uh, geotech reports are, are really, really big. Uh, they are the one thing that I demand before I even start consulting with clients. Before you even start thinking about building a home, uh, I look at the geotech report. It's going to tell me if I can put a pool in or not. And it's going to tell me how, what the additional cost is. I'm putting in a pool for a client, and i got collapsible soils. We've got to go down quite a bit and do some recompaction and then dig out the hole for the pool. If we just put the pool in and I've got collapsible soils, you can imagine what, what kind of problem that is going to be. I wanted to give you that information real quick. It was a great post today. I've got to go back out to the job site. I'm actually fixing a, uh, a huge uh, uh, drainage pond that filled up with eight or four feet of sediment over a huge rainstorm that we just recently had. So I've got to hurry and go out and get that done real quick. Uh, again, send your questions. Uh, I'll reply to them individually if you have those. Thank you for chiming in. This is Keith Kelsch with How to Build Your Own Home. And go to howtobuildyourownhome.com. Again, howtobuildyourownhome.com. If you're thinking about being an owner builder, uh, there's a simple preliminary class that's just $15, and it walks you through some big, big question issues. I strongly recommend uh, students take that. And then I also have a great course, uh, two other courses. Uh, one is the... Uh, self-managed package and that self-managed package gives you everything you need it gives you a working budget it gives you um, uh, 45 checklists you can walk on a job site know what to look for with regard to uh, subcontractors that come and do work on your job site uh, draw sheets 
subcontractor agreements, just about everything you need. And it's growing. Video instruction, downloadable PDFs, worksheets, the name. It's not a book. It's an actual course to help you replace the general contractor and save a lot of money. This is Keith Kaus with How to Build Your Own Home. Thanks.